In Battlefield 1, classes stay true to the classic format. Selecting one will give you and your squad benefits, but without a mix, your squad will lack some vital components. Each class has a different set of weapons, a different set of equipment that they bring to the battle to help contribute to the success of the team. Depending on the scenario, you'll need to determine which class would be the most effective, so let's go through some of the classes and best practices. Ideal to taking down close-range infantry and land vehicles, Assault's primary weapons include shotguns and submachine guns. Stick to the trenches and buildings to maintain cover and catch the enemies up close. Their equipment includes some heavy explosives, anti-tank grenades and dynamite for up close and personal, with an anti-tank rocket able to take down targets from long range. With infantry only, this is the best class to take down tanks. Work together with a few others and you can bring them down in no time. Medic is one of the most well-rounded and most appreciated classes in Battlefield. Great for almost all scenarios, he's armed with a medium range, single fire, or semi-auto rifle. You can at least get into the gunfight or lay down some suppression, if not kill the enemy, while also being a huge value add for your team. Able to heal injured teammates and get them back on the battlefield faster, and even reviving fallen teammates if you can get to them fast enough. You can also combo this equipment or even switch it out completely for the rifle grenade, capable of launching smokes, frags, and even light anti-vehicle rounds farther distances than the average throw. With some of the most deadly weaponry, the light machine guns. Support has high damage from range, huge magazines to mow through enemies, and some great equipment to benefit the entire team. Crucial to have at least one for every other squad or so, they can resupply the team with ammunition and explosives with their ammo crate. They're also the class with the traps, which becomes great when trying to protect your flank routes as well as helping to defend objectives. Tripwires with explosives, fire, and even gas can make quick work of an unsuspecting enemy. Finally, the Scout is best known for hanging back and picking off enemies with the sniper rifle. Designed for long-range support, these sharpshooters can suppress and kill enemies from hundreds of meters away, having to deal with bullet velocity and drop-off. It requires a lot of skill, but the reward is very strong. Besides kills, with the equipment, the snipers can contribute in other ways from range, including with the new spotting scope. This will allow you to scan the battlefield from extreme range, and rather than your average spotting, it will highlight the entire player or vehicle in red. They can also help take down vehicles with their special K-bullets. Target the right weak points on the vehicles to increase the amount of damage. If you find yourself in a lot of close range situations, you can also bring out the flare gun, capable of being shot up in the air and automatically spotting targets within the radius, or switch it to flash to blind the enemies. Try out all the classes and see which fits best with you. There will be different situations where some are better than others though. Learn those, master the equipment, and destroy it on the battlefield. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Stone Mountain 64 for Battlefield Bootcamp. Teamwork make a dream work. Hell yes, Snoop. While it is possible to take on the battlefield alone, 
The structure of Battlefield is set up in that you get benefits from working as a squad, and you want to leverage that as much as possible to dominate. Each squad will have one leader and up to five players in it. In the bottom left, you can see who's in your squad as well as what class they are, and if you ever notice that you're by yourself or maybe only have one other player, go to the Team Setup menu and try and condense the squads. As you'll see in this video, there's some good benefits being in a squad, so you might as well maximize it. One of the biggest benefits is spawning. Battlefield is known for its map scale, which can be difficult at first to manage, but working together, you can maintain spawns and continue to push the line. If your teammate's alive and not in combat, you can spawn directly on him rather than having to spawn back at base and run or take some type of transport vehicle back up to the action. Because you're getting right into the fight though, be cautious of where you spawn. When you're in a squad spawning off each other, you're generally going to stay close to one another. And with the squad's indicator in the bottom left, you can see what classes your friendly squad mates are. Try and choose your class based on what the others are using or what the situation is calling for. If you have enough coordination, you should be able to get a pretty well-rounded squad, ideally synergizing classes to maximize your effectiveness. On defense with a couple tanks rolling in at you, grab a couple assaults with anti-tank rockets, a support to keep dropping more ammo and explosives, and a medic to keep everybody topped off on health and coming back to life. The best way to work together with the squad is through communication. Each squad has its own voice channel to communicate between each other. On PC, you can also incorporate text chat, which also works for the entire team. But through communication, you can give your teammates a lot more intel. If you're the passenger in a vehicle, you're likely facing a different direction than the pilot or driver. Calling out those players can help him make better decisions as well as yourself. If nothing else, you at least have the squad leader with the ability to mark priority objectives. If your squad works together and can secure the objective or defend it, you'll earn bonus points for the entire squad. And if he's not marking anything, through the same menu where you request healing, request ammo, you can also request order objectives. Just as you would expect in war, Vehicles are some of the most powerful components of it, and you can amplify their effectiveness by calling out where enemies are coming from. Most vehicles are not meant to be used alone. Even with planes, they have multiple seats now. Spawn directly onto friendly squad mates' vehicles and control the skies with defensive turrets, calling out bogey locations, or operate on the back of a heavy tank, breathing fire onto enemies and calling out where people are flanking. With large squad sizes, people spawning off each other, and good communication going out, you should be able to strategize and dominate the battlefield. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Stone Mountain 64 for Battlefield Bootcamp. Hey guys, Jack Frags here and in this video I'll be offering up some hot tips and strategy for the Sinai Desert map in Battlefield 1. Fun fact, this is one of the biggest battlefield maps ever made. Let that sink in for a minute. Admittedly, a lot of that is desert area towards the E-flag, but facts are facts. And because of its size, it can be a dangerous place to get around. And how, pray tell, can a battlefield player survive in such a harsh climate? Let's see. If you're a big infantry player, there are a number of flags that you ideally want to float between. The antenna on C flag at the top of the map, the train station at D, and the outskirts flag at B. These are your best bets to go between as an infantry player. In between you and those flags is a village area and it's the most built up area on the map so SMGs on assault players can do very well here. Don't let that fool you though because there are snipers everywhere on this map. Over towards B there are multiple sniper spots near the rock so even heading over there can be dangerous. Keep out of line of sight as best you can and use the sand dunes and rocks as cover. If the dust storm comes in, even better because you can easily use the horses to sneak behind enemy cover without being seen. And learn the spawn locations of the elite classes too. They spawn at three of the flags. If you want the tank hunter, he's over at E, the flame trooper spawns at B and the sentry spawns over at F. Once they've been used and the player is killed, I believe they spawn back in after a few minutes, so be on the lookout. If you want to play as a sniper on Sinai Desert, then you've got a wealth of positions to choose from. Over at F, there are some rock cliffs you can get on top of and have a good lookout over towards the middle of the map. 
This point is also perfect for the rush game mode. If you're attacking, try and get up on top of the rocks and you'll have a perfect look down onto the MCOMs. Over towards the B flag near the rocks is another good sniper location. You can have a really good view towards the train station and the middle of the map and you can pick players off as they try to cross the desert. And when getting around the map, you're going to want to use the vehicles wherever possible because it's just huge. You don't want to be running through the desert with all the open area and snipers out there. Use the transport vehicles whenever possible and utilise the horses but remember you're always going to be very vulnerable on a horse. Keep your rifle out when you're moving around and use your sword when you get up close. In all honesty though, it's probably easier sometimes to just run people over with the horse than it is to slow down and to swipe them. If you need to reload your rifle, remember that you'll need to stop sprinting, so slow down. On the other side of the fence, if you come up against someone on a horse, there's a real tendency to shoot the bigger target, which of course is the horse. But that's a mistake. Horses have way more health than a player, and as such, it's much easier to aim for the player on top of the horse. Be careful though, because if they were sprinting, the horse will carry on in that direction, just like a jeep would in BF4. And if it comes near you and hits you, it will kill you. The hitboxes are pretty large. If you come up against a vehicle on a horse, you do have two light anti-tank grenades to utilise, but really, they aren't going to do that much damage against tanks unless they're already damaged quite badly, but kills are possible. And remember about the armoured train as well, if your team has it, use it. There are gunner spots throughout it, and the driver can stop at two of the flags and help to capture them. Be wary though because it's extremely vulnerable from the sky, in fact planes with rockets or the tank hunter packages can do some serious damage and another tactic is for assault players to drop down mines on the track. The train can do very little about them itself so they're going to do some real damage if they hit. And another thing about planes, if they're taking control of the game remember that the artillery truck has an anti-air package available, use it if you need to. The artillery truck can be fairly underutilised because people want to mainly focus on the tanks but sometimes the air vehicles really Really do need to be dealt with. And finally, when playing Rush, there's a big new tool at your disposal, Artillery. When you're defending, you can run up to an objective and hold use on it to send out Artillery. It's worth using it because if nothing else is keeping the attacking team back or on their toes, you can do it on both objectives and it will detect enemy positions and send out a massive barrage of fire. Could save your ass if you're in a pinch. And that's all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks for the Sinai Desert map in the Battlefield 1 beta. As always, thank you for watching, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs down if you didn't, and I'll see you in the next one.